for so much and our sheikh is saying something and we say you know whether it's right or not whoever has less belief and we and there's a piece of paper and we read it and say yeah i mean you know this is what's going on yeah this is the weakness of our faith yeah and the lack of connection to a certain level with our sheikh and many people have no sheikh obviously they have you know shaitan and so we're completely misled and we're just going in circles uh-huh. we think that we have achieved something and it's a feeling it's a false feeling uh-huh. we're waking up and finding that you know that we are achieving nothing and so we are being led astray in mass uh-huh. by certain images and which are you know producing like a like constant images on the tv and things like that and false literature is complete deviation nowadays that's right this is when it was learned just now i think it's about this problem so this is when the man starts mm, believing more in the falseness of his senses than the reality of his heart and his spirit you need your senses to be satisfied then your heart is going to be satisfied they need to see the proof on a piece of paper they need to see an image they need to see something then they are going to believe which is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the holy quran oh believers believe believers have to constantly believe because now we're living in this world too unless you're an awliya where you start to witness your faith we have not achieved that level of safety in our faith we can be led astray we can be led to haq that is the majority of the people those who have finished with this world and they are not being led astray anymore they're being targeted to lead others now and so when we start to believe more in the world of the senses as a reality then it is what our heart and our spirit is telling us is when we get into a lot of trouble all believers believe we have to believe more than 40 times a day we sing ihdina siratal mustaqim guide us ya rabbi in the straight path if we already have shahada if we pray we're doing everything why do we have to repeat this ayat over and over again guide us in the straight path because always there is shaitan before shaitan always there is the ego and the shaitan and the ego dunya and our hawa the desires what are they doing are they there to bring us to haq and to allah never they're always bringing us to battle to falseness and now why are we saying so many times this is the age of dajjal because like what you said and mass is happening Like what Shaykh Ali says, 99.99% of the world now is going to the wrong direction. Muslims have lost the compass. We have lost it. Christians have lost the compass. Jews have lost the compass a long time ago. But Muslims, we have lost the compass now. And we start to become very cheap with our faith and very cheap with the things that we want to believe. Hmm? Like what I said before. today do muslims even believe that there are holy people anymore people who can work miracles anymore do they even believe in miracles anymore or do they only believe in what they see what they taste what they feel what they hear what they see no if you are like that if you are trapped just inside your five senses then you know better than an animal and an animal is better than you because an animal has been created for that purpose we have not been created for an animal life we have been created to be representing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so now we are here and we know that this system now it is a system that has been designed now to bring us out from faith to disbelief especially in the last 100 years it has been designed step by step what we have been doing individually to families to communities to countries and nations step by step 
we are coming out of faith. We are following the Jews and the Christians and we are leaving our own belief system. What we said before, yes, yesterday, a couple of nights, why are we talking about the Ottomans? The Ottomans is our direct link. It is not that link. People, when they talk about their own uh, tribalism and nationalism, what their tribes and their cultures have to offer, not a single one from the Balkans to China, Russia, to Africa, to the Middle East, when they celebrate their national day, ever bring up the Ottomans. They cannot. The Arabs definitely are not going to bring up the Ottomans. Okay? When they celebrate their national day, they will go not only not talking about the Ottomans, they will go to pre-Islamic times. They will talk about how either we were a great nation before Islam, worshipping to their own sense of identity now, pre-Islamic identity. Or they say before that we were nothing and now we make ourselves to be something. So wiping out the hundreds of years of Islamic identity. Once you start wiping out the hundreds of years of Islamic identity, we become fools. We become very easy targets for anyone to come and imprint things on us and to lead us astray. The Ottomans, like what we said before, one of the distinguishing features, one of the things that make them very different, is that, again, because it is a Turkish empire, just as the Mughals. The Mughals, they were Turks. We look at these two Sunni empires, <coughs> they were 100%, more than 100%, supporting Tasawuf, Tariqat, and Sufism. Isn't it? From the state imperial level to the street level, everyone was supporting it, believing it. We will talk about the earlier ones, the Umawis and the Abbasis. Uh, we're not going to enter so much there. But when we look at the Ottomans, we look at the Mughals in India, it was part of their lives. You cannot separate now Islam and the Tariqats and the Sheikhs. Then what happens when the whole nation, when the whole empire is guided by Sheikhs? They don't have Shaitan as a Sheikh. Once you say, we don't want to believe in Shaykh, you have Shaitan as your Shaykh. Yeah. And you have that from the highest level to the lowest level now. Now everyone has Shaitan as a Shaykh, and Shaitan is making everyone en masse to be drunk, to be blind, to not use their intelligence and their logic, and to not use their heart, while making them to believe that they are the best of the Muslims. So yeah. Because now, the reality of the world is there are things, there are more things that is not caught inside these five senses than there are things that are within these five senses. And there are more things for us to understand than there are things that we can see. And the Prophets and the Ali Allah, that's what they are trying to take us away from this world, low world, to a higher world. To say that you are also an inheritor of these worlds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created all these worlds for us. So don't get stuck into your own world. It's not going to work so much. So, Alhamdulillah, we are here, living in the Ahir Zaman, where we are declaring our love and our connection and our bayat of our Shaykh. Be happy with that. Be very happy that out of these billions of people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen us. Has chosen us to have our Shaykh as our guide and not shaitan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us on the day of judgment in these end times where this whole world is filled with jababira, 
with cruelty and tyranny. What did we do? Who did we follow? Where our hearts are? Because so many, once their heart starts to become a little bit more tolerant to the evil of this world, you become part of that evil and you'll be punished for it. We are not. We're not liking that. It doesn't matter what people call us. It doesn't matter the who's here. One or a million. Because we're not looking at these times. We're not looking at this place. We're looking at the time and the place. The time before time and the place before there was a place. We're aiming for that. Here it doesn't matter. Ah, man has been here 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. So what? It's going to pass. Whatever we've collected is going to be destroyed. Whatever that we have is going to pass. And we are going to go somewhere else. And that place that we are going to go, we cannot take anything with us. We cannot take our children that we love. We cannot take the job that we hold so high. We cannot take our friends. We cannot take nothing. Except for our good intentions and our actions. So we have to concentrate on that. What the khutbah is saying, the work. The work to bring Islam. We are not dais. We are not the ones who are having a dawah, which, by the way, it is forbidden to go door to door and to knock on people's house. In Islam, it is forbidden. That is Christian style. So now, our work is what? To bring the light of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. And the light of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, as much as you are carrying his sunnah, that much light will be given to you. You can carry his sunnah physically, you can carry his spiritual sunnah, you can carry his adab, it doesn't matter. Because everything that you take from the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, it is nothing but light upon light. And it is going to chase away all the darkness. And the people who are going to be attracted are the people of light who are attracted to that light. The people who are not liking it, they belong completely to shaitan. That's all. And we should not be afraid. That is our purpose here. We should change our purpose. We should not say, I came to America to find a job. I came to America to find a wife, a husband, to set up a new life. We will be asked, Imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked, why did you move from Muslim, say, India or Pakistan, and you go to a place where it is completely a non-Islamic country, and you say to Allah, I move because I need to find a job. We may have made that intention before, but now we know better. And it is Allah that is pulling us here for a job anyway. And our work as Sunnis, as those who follow the Sunnah of the Prophet, is to bring the Son of Islam into every house. That has to be the overarching uh, reason why we are going moving, why we are doing things. Everything else comes with it. Everything else can come with it. But that has to be the first thing that we say and we have to remind ourselves. Just as when we wake up, first thing we have to do is to renew our shahada. And to say, Ya Rabbi, today I make a promise to live for you. We may forget that, being busy with the world, working and doing other things. But we've already made that first promise to our Lord, and that counts for a lot in these days. We are here for the sake of our Shaykh, coming. And as much as the people here are wanting it, we will continue. And it is necessary because there should be areas of safety in the coming days in different parts of the world, different parts of this country where people can come to find safety. People, Muslim, Christians or Jews, believers or unbelievers. Because the heavy days, they are coming. They are on top of us. And we should always keep that in mind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me and bless you. May He keep our hearts to be together. And may the good people come around us, inshallah, to build this jama'at. There's more work to build the jama'at. 
And today we are here, tomorrow we will be somewhere else. And those ones, those of you listening in the Delga, then what are you going to do when the call and the permission is given and we are asked to go to different places for a majority of the year? to spread the teachings of Asha. So we have to get used to it. We have to find work to keep us busy. And we have to continue in that work. <coughs> May Allah make it easy for you and for me. Amen. Fatiha.